So <coughs> good morning, and uh, we today, as, uh, as usual, we are uh, doing our practice class. And I would like to uh, to start from the end of uh, what you have seen last time. And in particular, we were talking about the uh, I'm gonna find it just a moment. Yes, this one. Uh, what we did is to consider a given equilibrium composition at a, at a given chamber temperature, the exit temperature also was known, as well as the uh, composition, I said, that at um, chamber condition, and we were comparing the results that can be obtained, assuming frozen expansion, constant gamma, or equilibrium conditions. I gave you the, the hints on how to uh, proceed to get the solutions, and I also provide you with the main result of the computation that could should be carried should have been carried out, of course, exploiting tables and uh, that we have available. And just to to recall that uh, the difference that we have to consider. In case of frozen expansion compared to the equilibrium expansion is that composition is changing. And then when we have to, uh, co to find, depending on what you have, if you have the temperature, you have to find the pressure, the pressure for instance, at the exit, or vice versa, if you have the pressure ratio, you have to find the temperature that you have at the exit that can be an interesting quantity. The difference is that you have to assume in both cases isentropic expansion and you should consider the conservation of the entropy not the in general of the specific entropy but this means that as the mass flow rate is the same as steady state condition the mass specific entropy must be kept constant in case of frozen flow the molar mass doesn't change, and this means that also the molar entropy doesn't change between chamber and the exit. And this simplifies also the, the fact that the composition doesn't change, also simplify the term which is within the entropy expression, which is related to the composition. You recall that we have xi logarithm of xi as a contribution in the expression of entropy. This term here. So of course, if we have, as we have to make a difference of two entropies, this only depends on composition. We have a chamber and at the exit the same value. And if they have to be equal, they have not to, if you have that this term will cancel. But we will see an example also today. So the difference is that this is no longer true if we consider equilibrium because there is this term is different at chamber with respect to what we have at the exit. Moreover, in case of equilibrium, the molar mass of the mixture is changing. So as we recall that what must be kept equal between chamber and exit is the specific mass specific entropy, it means that it is no longer true that the molar specific entropy is constant if you are considering equilibrium condition. Of course, there is the, the molar mass between the mass specific and the uh, more specific or molar values. So I hope that some of you have done the exercise if you have done and you have uh, questions related to that exercise, please tell me and we will see it together today. So the next step, do you have questions? Mm, 
non le tornavano di, di tanto o di poco. Ok, quindi il caso di equilibrio sta dicendo. E il caso Frozen aveva fatto? So, uh, I think that at this point, uh, uh, as some of you uh, attempted to make this exercise and there, there is some numerical issue uh, at the final result, uh, I think that it is convenient to, to show a few numbers related to the equilibrium case of the former uh, practice class. So, We assume, and uh, I think uh, that you, you have done it, I, I hope that I, uh, I told you about that, that as we are considering TE is 1400 Kelvin, we assume that here we just have uh, uh, hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen, right? As the final composition. And uh, from here, as we, we know the, that uh, OF is equal to 10, these are information that we had uh, at the beginning. Uh, yes, I think I gave you this information, of course because we, we, we can build it from the molar fraction that we have in chamber. And at this point, we have to distribute uh, this OF10 between HF and H2. So we have X, H, F plus X, H2, H2. with x h2 which is 1 minus x h f and we can uh, say that o f is equal to 10 and this will be x h f multiplied by 19 uh, is 19 is 20 Ah, yes, 19 is the, uh, because I'm uh, computing the atoms of fluorine. So X, HF by 19 divided by the other one is here, of course, multiplied by H. And here I have uh, plus X, H2, which is 1 minus X, X, HF, that multiplies 2, which is molar mass of hydrogen, right? And from this equation, and here I have, uh, it's got minus, so it's two minus XHF. We have uh, <coughs> that this is equal to 20 over 29, 8.69 roughly, and As a consequence, XH2 is 0.31. So, uh, in the frozen computation, as well as in the equilibrium computation, we can evaluate the absolute enthalpy of reactants or of products, which is the same, in a chamber conditions. So we have all the molar fractions and we can evaluate the molar absolute enthalpy of first, which is this sum x i h i and uh, 
So you have 0 0.017, and then you go to consider the temperature of uh, 4,500 Kelvin. So this is uh, of course this is evaluated at 4,500 Kelvin. And so, for instance, I just write a couple of figures, then you will continue. This is 0 0.0. 1.7 multiplies 1.678874. And this is, for instance, the contribution related to fluorine, atomic fluorine. This is XF, and this is the corresponding HF. A 4,500 Kelvin. And then you have plus blah, blah, blah. Result should be two point four four megajoule per kilomole. Surprising that you is a surprise that you have this value. It's not zero. So we have seen that in other cases we have zero. What is the difference? That for some reason, we, we don't know exactly how were uh, introduced the reactants. We know the final composition. The fact that it's not zero, it means that the uh, Reactants were not a standard condition, so they can have an absolute entropy, which is different from zero, and this will be the same as the, 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 the of course, the mass specific value will be the same as that we have for the uh, products of combustion. So this is the molar value. And we also know that, let's say this MC, to say a chamber condition, uh, can be computed on the basis of the molar fractions. We have 13.2. Okay. Let's go back to equilibrium. We have the same value of molar Entropy, we, uh, these are megajoule per kilomole, we multiply, uh, sorry, we divide by M, that means this is per mole, per mole, and this is the weight of single mole, so we can uh, divide and get the mass specific value of H, that is what we use then to compute the actual velocity. Okay. So we have just to evaluate now also the to, to get the excess velocity. We have to evaluate, you recall that UE is equal to square root of y H C minus H E. And so we have to evaluate this one. And uh, of course, uh, we can uh, go back to tables because we know that this will be given by the x h f by the value of the entropy of uh, nitrogen fluoride at temperature T e plus x h2 by the entropy of H2 and T.
and this is 0.69 multiplying minus 240 0.26 plus 0.31 multiplying 33.08 and so we have as a result minus 155.53 megajoules per kilomol. And uh, of course, here you see this is the mass specific value, this is the more specific one. We need to know Me to switch from one to the other. And this is 0.69 multiplying 20, which is the molar mass of HF, plus 0.31, multiplying 2. And the result is 14.42 kilogram per kilomol. And so H E is sorry, without this specific value is minus 11.33 megajoules per kilogram, put them here, and the result is 4799 meters per second. Did you find what uh, went uh, different? Quanto viene? Eh, mi sembra un po' grande. Uh, I would expect some, something on the, the, let's say, close to this value. Of course, the value will change depending on the, the, the number of digits that you consider. Uh, there will be a, 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 a truncation error. Of course, you can have different value. Uh, perhaps I made wrong uh, calculation, but but in general, uh, we expect some differences, but not huge differences, of course. So I would expect some change, but roughly, I think that uh, 100 meters per second is enough. It, it's too high as a difference. But anyway, the, the the important thing at this moment is to follow the right procedure. And of course, the numbers are important for us, but if you, if the, the, the also at the exam, is not the last digit the most important thing. What, what's important is the way, is the, 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 the capability to handle correctly the, the process of a solution because it's what you will implement in a digital machine that will allow you to have more precise values. So this is what we, we are interested in. So this was the first part of the equilibrium computation. I would say the simplest one. The next step was that of computing the pressure ratio assuming the isentropic expansion. And so I will uh, uh, do it now, even if it's something different to what I expected to do. Uh, I, we have here, we, we need to verify that SC is equal to FE. These are the mass specific values. We know that because MC different from ME, it follows that we have this difference. And in general, what we have in the tables are the molar values. So the molar values that we have available and we express them 
at this value, which is on the table and depends on temperature, plus beta minus R. The term related to the composition, the term related to pressure. Molar value expression that we have also here. Let's say that this is F0 of Tc of T. We have this expression. Now, if you take the value, of course, you have to consider for each quantity, but we have this S0, this is of the mixture, so S0 Tc is the sum of Xi T S0 I Tc. You do this and you get that this value is equal to Two hundred thirty seven point one one kilojoule kilomol Kelvin, and you can also evaluate this term here. <clears throat> whose value is uh, minus. 0.987 and as we had the chamber pressure of 100 atmosphere we also know this term which is which is 100 so we can compute everything at chamber condition and we can get the molar entropy at chamber and it will result to be 207.02 kilojoule kilomol Kelvin. So what we have to do now is to exploit this equality to calculate this as E. And as we know the composition, we know this value because you know the composition and the temperature T, which is 1,400. We know the composition, so we know this. So the only unknown is PE. So this is, uh, you can check it, is 206.40. This other term is minus 0 0.619. And so we have that this will be equal to 206 plus uh, I don't have numbers. I'm not sure of, of uh, numbers so that I have here. So we should compute uh, and uh, But not the calculator here. So I think I'll rest my time. 
So overall, what we have to do at next step, let's compute later, we have to uh, switch to the from the molar to the mass specific value. So we have that SC over MC must be equal to SE over MC. And uh, this term here, so this is S E, and this will be equal given this expression here and the value that we have of M E will be 14.67 minus 0.576 by the logarithm of P E. Over P zero. And this must be equal to this value here divided by the molar mass, which is fifteen, let's say, let's write it here. And this is fifteen point six eight. Terms are in uh, kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. And at this point, we can uh, evaluate our value of Pe from here. In atmosphere, as 14.6. Seven minus fifteen point six eight over point five seven six. This is minus one point seven five three, and so P E is equal to point one seven three atmosphere. Oh, PC over T, as I wrote yesterday, uh, yes, last Friday, is 577.5. So continuing this uh, discussion, I'd like now to pass to a first case, which is the, the, the result that we can obtain by assuming, by considering the uh, modified Bray assumption. It's still a, an isentropic case, but we can split our isentropic expansion from chamber to trot and then from trot to exit by considering first an equilibrium isentropic expansion up to the trot and then from trot to the exit an isentropic frozen expansion. So to, uh, to proceed, uh, we need to know something about the, the trot conditions, because actually what we have is that the composition of the mixture at trot will be different from what we have at chamber because we have a decrease of temperature and pressure and it will be different from uh, uh, what we have seen in the case of equilibrium at the exit condition which is relevant to much lower temperature and pressure. So we need some information and we, we can give this for to, to see this example. And in particular, we have that at trot, we have this composition, 0.011 for the atomic chlorine 
So this star means a trot or at critical conditions. 0.133, then we have x hydrophoric acid. is 0.633 and finally the amount of H2 will be 0.223. So we are considering now the modified by assumption. A trot, uh, a critical condition, we have this composition and the call that to evaluate the speed of sound, we need to know the, we need to use the right gamma because we are considering an equilibrium expansion. And we have that gamma S, which is minus gamma over D L and B, D L and P, at constant temperature is gamma equilibrium CP over CV. And uh, such that uh, This gamma corresponds to what we can use to evaluate the speed of sound starting from pressure and density. So we assume that we know this value. We, uh, recall that this value is exactly equal to our gamma. That is, so this is the ratio, the ratio of uh, CPs, this gamma equilibrium. I wrote it here in this way, and this gamma S is not the ratio of CP and CB, but is defined according to this expression, which is related to the derivative of pressure with respect to density, a constant entropy, which is the definition of the speed of sound as the velocity of propagation of signals <coughs> at uh, for a uh, uh, many. Uh, small perturbations. So what we see here, once we have this information, we uh, have all we need to evaluate our uh, expansion with the Bray assumption. And the reason is that we can exploit, we can take advantage from the fact that uh, mass specific entropy is constant. So the first thing we'd like to evaluate is the, so of course we have uh, to consider a constant entropy to, uh, to get right value of excess pressure and to do that, we can say that it will be at C equal to S star equal to S E. Mass specific values. And uh, relations we will need the, the composition that we have here. So this is constant value, but as we have written before, to evaluate these entropy values, you need the temperature, the corresponding temperature value. So here you, you need, and you already have this value actually, our uh, temperature Tc, here we need T star, and here we need Te. So here we have Te, we have the composition, the only value missing in SE is the pressure. Here we need to evaluate this S star. We need T star because 
this will allow us to get the corresponding pressure value. And uh, but you know, in principle, I, I would say that we don't need the, the We don't need necessarily the star value to, to get our uh, exit pressure. But uh, uh, actually, uh, <clears throat> we would like to, uh, let's evaluate the, the I'm just uh, checking if we can do everything without passing from the, the charging condition once we know this. Uh, so this is also the composition that we have as we have frozen expansion. We have also at E the same composition. And so we have temperature, we have uh, concentration, in which, so we can evaluate the um, the exit velocity without uh, necessarily considering the, without calculating the condition here. So these are only needed to, to evaluate, for instance, the, uh, the condition at throw that allow us to express, to, to, to have an idea of the area ratio. Mm -hmm. Because to, to evaluate our trot area, we need to, to know these conditions. But to evaluate the exit velocity, we don't need, because we just have to go back to this expression. Your section here. And so once we know the temperature at the exit, temperature at chamber, the molar mass, of the mixture at chamber and water mass of the mixture at the exit, we have everything we need. And uh, on the other hand, by from this equality, let's see what I see, we can also get the pressure at the exit. So let's have a look to what is different that means the conditions, uh, the critical conditions. So we have to make a few attempts and see uh, what would be the result. We can uh, assume the first tentative value of uh, the star as the uh, value obtained by the given gamma. This is strong, of course, as, a, as an expression because it assumes isotropic expansion. Uh, and with the given value of gamma, we have uh, this value of T star. So let's see what happens at this value of T star considering that A is square root of gamma RT and R is R over M. So from the composition we have given, this M is something that is known. And we have 13.45. And uh, so for this temperature here, from this value, 
and from the given value of gamma, we have this first tentative value of A, which is 1740 meters per second. So is this the sonic condition? Is the critical condition? We don't know. We can check through the comparing the speed of sound with the velocity that we have exactly at the temperature. In fact, we, we know that by the conservation of the energy, we can write this in terms of enthalpy. We have that U star, so the velocity at critical at this critical condition has to be expressed as twice Hc minus H star. We have always available this HC, it's always the same. We just seen a few minutes ago. And we can evaluate our molar H star from tables. And from this expression, so for the given value of temperature. So we have this composition and we can evaluate our molar enthalpy, molar absolute enthalpy, which is from tables. From this first tentative temperature, it's minus 20.84. And so the corresponding here, recall that always we had a mass specific value, which is of course obtained by dividing for the molar mass. Minus one point. 55 megajoule per kilogram. I put here inside and I have a first tentative value also for the velocity. So you see that uh, this first tentative value is not the exact one because we it results that the, the corresponding velocity at this temperature is supersonic, is higher than the uh, speed of sound. So what happens now? What will be the second tentative value of temperature? Will it be higher or smaller temperature? I can try with the next value on the table. I can try with 4,000 or 4,200 because I have every 100 Kelvin, the values on the tables. Which value would you select given this value of A star and U star as the second tentative value? 4,000? or 4,200. Uh, I have one, one answer, which is a higher temperature. Everybody agrees? Yes, this is correct, because we have that if we consider a higher temperature, the speed of sound will be, will increase, and at the same time, we have also an increase of H star, that means that we have less velocity. So as we move towards the chamber, we have higher temperature, so we have also here less velocity. So this is, will be the second tentative value, and you proceed exactly the same way. I will not spend much time here, I just say that after the second tentative we have uh, 
as the values of u and a have a star two is equal to uh, 1761 meters per second and u star two this is four thousand two hundred Kelvin. We have uh, seventeen hundred fifteen meters per second. So you see that in the second case we have a value of velocity which is smaller than the speed of sound so the the critical value will be in between you can make linear interpolation expression for the two quantities and you obtain that uh, if you make this you obtain this final value of temperature and of velocity and uh, uh, speed of sound. Okay, we, we stop here uh, up to 110 and then we we'll continue.
Yeah. So we can uh, we can continue. And uh, we see that, uh, as I said, we can calculate now with uh, modified by assumption. We have our HE, the moral value, of course, will be given by the sum of the composition. Of course, we have this. That means these are the critical conditions. And here are the chamber and the exit. And here we have equilibrium as equals constant. And here frozen flow as equals constant. So we have that xi star xic. And here again. We have the same composition as we are considering frozen expansion. But the value of molar entropy has to be evaluated at this exit temperature that we are available in this case so that we can evaluate this term resulting as minus 111. 0.53 megajoule kilomol. And I have to divide this again by M star to get the corresponding mass specific value. So you see that here is the difference because you are considering for the frozen, fully frozen case, for the equilibrium case, and for the Bray case, Bray modified assumption case. You see that we have in all cases, we are assuming that the exit temperature is the same. So for all of them, the E is 1400 Kelvin. But what we see is that we have different value of HE. And this is because we have different, in this case we have uh, XIC, in this case we have XIE, and here we have XI star. So the composition that we have here, this E means that the equilibrium up to the exit, so the value of HE will be different at the same temperature because we have different compositions, depending on the fact that we can consider the same composition as in chamber, and this is the frozen expansion. We have, you can consider the equilibrium composition at that temperature uh, at the exit, and we have the, the, this XIE, or we can consider the composition that we have at uh, short. And this is the modified by assumption. For instance, here in the frozen case, we had minus 7.785. So you see that value is different. And uh, as a consequence, also the exit velocity will be different. And we have this value 4,118 meters per second. So here, uh, as I said, we, we, it's not uh, necessary, I think, that we can proceed, we proceed again for the um, evaluation 
of pressure is exactly what we have seen before. And uh, if you consider the, the, the first part from here to here, of course, we can evaluate your P star. And of course, you can consider this range or this range to evaluate the E. Right? So the difference between these values of entropy or the expression of entropy for these two conditions or from these two conditions and these two ones. So the, the, the things that we have to do are the same. We have temperatures. Once we have temperature, we have the S0 from tables. We have temperature and compositions. And then if you are comparing the, the entropies, we have to be careful and consider mass specific versus more specific values and to consider or not depending on the equilibrium of frozen expansion, the group with Xi, logarithm of Xi. <clears throat> so I would like just to, to, to show here, we're passing to another exercise, the, what we can obtain, the results that we obtain for this given exit temperature, with the different assumptions. So something that you can check to show you that you can check manually to convince yourself of the different results that you can obtain by the different assumptions. So the velocity measure per second, I just list them here so that you can compare. So you see here that assuming equilibrium up to the exit, it's dream, it's not, in real, it's not real. <laughs> As you see that by Bayer assumption, it's more realistic. It's quite closer to the frozen assumption than to equilibrium one. And also the constant gamma give us a, reasonable, a more reasonable estimation than the equilibrium assumption. And these values, we made some approximation, but we use exactly the same process that is used, for instance, in chemical equilibrium with application software from NASA that is convenient to make this equilibrium evaluation for rockets. And uh, it results is for, let's say, CA. <clears throat> we have 3958, Probably you made right, I made some error and she made some correct computation. She doesn't know, but uh, it's closer to her value. So perhaps this is, please check this value, maybe it's wrong. It's chemical equilibrium with application, it's a code doing this operation, of course, is not just 100, 100 as the tables, but, uh, and you can consider in principle as many species as you like. So what, what I was, si che lo stavo dicendo, ma non stavate sentendo, state pensando ai esercitazioni e agli altri. No, invece io stavo dicendo che il valore che ha calcolato lei probabilmente è più corretto di quello che ho calcolato io perché corrisponde a quello che c'è su CEA, quindi questo lo, lo controllerò. I, I would verify this, this value because at this point as uh, your colleague computed the value which is closer to CA value, probably I made some, uh, some error in the evaluation. In che senso? 
accettabile nei nostri calcoli, ma nei, nei nostri casi appunto se ci si ferma uno o due decimali è più che sufficiente, gli errori saranno sull'ultima cifra, insomma. ovviamente sulla terza o quarta cifra, diciamo così. Mm. Non, non, diciamo sono tutti valori molto approssimati, però diciamo che ci danno un'idea, almeno qui capiamo che, che l'ipotesi di equilibrio bisogna stare molto attenti a considerarla anche con, con un software dove possiamo prescrivere il fatto che sia in equilibrio o congelato perché l'espansione centropica comunque è più facile da calcolare, quindi ci saranno quelle opzioni e quindi capiamo che fare l'ipotesi di equilibrio è un po' eccessiva, no? So, I was answering questions here uh, in the classroom about uh, the, the approximation that we need to consider in the computation and uh, what I was recommending is just to use uh, the one or two digits uh, after, uh, let's say, of decimals, but in general, let's say that uh, the The most important are the first three significant values. So here, for instance, I would not uh, focus on this last digit. Even if, when we go to actual value, we would like to, to know it exactly because it can, the meaning can be kilograms of payload. So here, also I would like to, to, to show you some other differences because this is what we have for that given temperature, but that given temperature, how is obtained? It depends. We can see this in terms of pressure ratio we have to achieve and how we get this pressure ratio. That means how, what will be the area ratio of our divergence section or expansion ratio of another. So we can see uh, here the uh, pressure ratio and the corresponding value by Ca under 50, under 1, 577, under 4, 2, and one or oh, one. So you see that also in terms of pressure ratio, the assumption of equilibrium changes completely the value. It's five to six times larger than the value that you obtain by frozen and equilibrium assumption as well as with constant gamma. And the same we can see also in terms of the epsilon. This goes from 12. Uh, then I, I think I did not compute it here. So I don't have the value. but we can compare it. We understand that we, the value given by TA is the same of our computation, more or less. And so you see that to get, it's true that we have a higher exo speed here, but it's also true that to get that temperature in equilibrium condition, you have to consider another ratio, which is almost four times, nearly four times greater than what we actually have.
<coughs> so let's let's do uh, another exercise on this uh, kind of uh, a similar exercise we will do next time so that today we we switch to another one to see something different else it's too boring and let's try with this one Let's consider a solid rocket motor. Tubular kind. So we got tubular grain. Uh, with not restricted ends. It's a big rocket, so we have a section diameter here, which is two meters, and the length of five meters. So the figure is not to scale. We have a diameter here, which is 25 centimeters, and also a port area, initial port area, related to the diameter of that we have here, this port diameter, which is 40 centimeters. Propellant density is 1600 kilogram per cubic meter. And C star is, is 1400 meters per second. Chamber pressure at initial time is 35 bar. Combustion index is 0.4. With this information, first we'd like to calculate A, the temperature coefficient. So this is rather simple uh, compared to, to the expression with the, the entropy, the asymptotic expansion for sure is, is something simpler. Think a little bit about it.
So you have to consider the, uh, the burning surface this one because you have not uh, need us. So what you have to do? Just use the St. Robert law for the uh, burning rate and the fact that you will recall that PC is equal to rho P A C star K one or one minus N. So we have our unknown here, but we know this, we know this, this one to what we can evaluate as also N is known. The only quantity that we should evaluate first before computing our A is the Clemung. So Clemung is AB over AT. We have the short diameter. And uh, so as a consequence, uh, the AT is pi d squared over four. And so we should evaluate our AB, and this is given by the, the two contributions of the lateral surface of the hollow cylinder that we have in the core and the circular crown that corresponds to this part here. So I move to the next. Page. Well, I can write okay. Maybe will be this is the other surface of the cylinder. We have to consider our diameter dp is the per diameter and this is uh, it, it was 40 centimeters right and then we have the other part which is of course uh, pi r squared the, the outer radius square and the inner radius square. So we should consider here plus, so the, the or the half diameter squared. So if I have one fourth pi d squared minus dp squared, where d is two meters. L is phi, according to the drawing we have seen. And so we have here 9.3 square meters as burning surface. Short area uh, can be computed as phi for the square. And it is even as Point oh four nine square meters so that K one eight nine point four four and finally from here we evaluate our Temperature coefficient K of 
1.99 10 to the minus 5. Maybe that's the second one. Pascal minus n. So here I put in this expression to get this value pressure in Pascal. So we add it in bar, it's 3.5 by 10 to the 6. Pascal was our chamber pressure. Okay, the second part of this exercise that you I hope you can try to, to do something is to evaluate our pressure. Now that we have also A for its computation, always assuming steady state condition at a given time. And this time corresponds to, uh, you see here, to a web distance consumed. So we start, this is the initial condition. And at this time we have reached this second position. So the so, uh, grain surface has regressed. of an amount of 25 centimeters. Okay, so the web distance corresponds that has been consumed, uh, corresponds to 25 centimeters, and we like to evaluate the corresponding steady state chamber equilibrium chamber pressure, and also an estimate of the time needed to reach this new uh, position of the grain surface. So what we have to do in a few words is just to eat the same exercise as before, just a uh, reversed way. We have A in this case, and you have to compute this C. So not uh, special. So just to, to evaluate the surface, what changes is the, of course, the length, uh, because it has been uh, consumed in part, and also the pore diameter just been increased. Pore diameter will increase on both sides, so we have to consider twice 25, that means 50 centimeters, and we have 0.9 meters as the new diameter. And from here, we have that our port area becomes, in this case, 15.94 
square me that so that our k is 324.64 and the consequent pc It's about 86 bar. That means that because of the the length that we have compared to the diameter, even let's say the the tubular gain will be progressive, and so we expect that we increase the chamber pressure. It's true that we have also a regressive contribution that comes from the uh, non inhibited ends, but of course, this is quite almost negligible because the diameter is quite small with respect to the length. And so we, we see that oh, pressure has increased uh, significantly. And what about time? Time would be, of course, uh, that this web distance would be the given by the integral of the burning rate dt from zero to t given by instant of time that we are looking for. So here what you can see, you can say that this is a zero t And you see that you can obtain, you can also integrate uh, well, you should have, this is a PC, it's a function of, of time. So you should express the chamber pressure as a function of the area, which is a function of time. So it's not uh, straightforward, uh, but uh, so we can estimate this in general, you can also find a relation, a direct integration, so we can have the exact result, but for the, for the first approximation, we can also consider, compare the values of burning rate that we have here at 35 bar. And this 8.2 millimeters per second. And here what we have at 85 bar. And this 11.10 millimeters per second. So you see that it changes, but it not, doesn't change order of magnitudes. So you can approximate with an average value. Let's take, for instance, an average value of R of 10 millimeters per second, which is a factor in between R1 and R2. And with this, uh, we assume that W is average R by delta T and our delta T will be, in this case, 25 seconds that give us a first estimate. Okay. I think it's clear. We go further. We consider now <clears throat> a propellant following the Saint Robert law as R equal A P C M, and also that the temperature coefficient can be expressed with respect to the 
reference temperature value and uh, to an initial uh, reference temperature, I said, and also a uh, temperature dependence through this uh, factor tau. And this is Ti minus Ti zero. So initial temperature minus the reference initial temperature. <coughs> so this propellant is evaluated by a trend burner with a, uh, and test is made of the initial temperature of Ti equal to Ti zero equal to the standard temperature here, 20, 298.515 Kelvin. And uh, at this condition, we have that R is equal to, and at one bar, We have this uh, burning rate of 2.33 millimeter per second. At the same temperature, initial, initial temperature, if we make the evaluation in an environment of 10 bars, we have this R2 will be equal to 7.04 millimeter per second. If we consider uh, a lower temperature, lower initial temperature, so of uh, 10 degree lower, that means if Ti is equal to 288, 515 Kelvin, and pressure is one bar, we have <clears throat> uh, reduction of the burning rate to 2.3 millimeter per second. You see that is a small change from 2.33 to 2.3. So now, if we consider as known our Clemung, which is 125. The exit Mach number, exit from the nozzle to 3.5, and we consider ideal nozzle with gamma equal to 1.2. And we also know about the propellant that this density is 1,760 kilogram per cubic meter, and C star is equal to 1540 meter per second. With this information, we'd like to compute trot area to get uh, a truss of 2 mega newtons. And uh, at the initial temperature of The, the reference one. Then we'd like to see also, this is the first question. The second one would be, what is the trust in case of Ti? So if we consider the same rocket and we just change the initial temperature and we bring it to 278.15, what will be the corresponding trust? And finally, uh, we'd like to compare the burning time in case one and two. So you see we have three burning rates and we have uh, three coefficients to be evaluated in this expression because we have that in general our R will be 80 
y tau ti minus ti0 this is our a and then we have p c n so we know that the burning rate follows this law and uh, you see that we have uh, three unknown coefficients which are a zero tau and n so with these three measures I can evaluate this coefficient that I assume constant. Once you do this, uh, so that you have uh, A and in general at the given temperature condition from the Clemon and the value of C star and rho P, of course, once you have A, you can evaluate your uh, chamber pressure. So what you can obtain is the following. I give you the results and then you can compute by yourself. So N results to be 0.48. Eight zero is nine point two five and uh, and a zero and tau one point three times one is three Kelvin minus one. And so you can obtain by the equilibrium condition, you will obtain that your PC is equal to 53.25 bar. <clears throat> and then you can compute a ton for the ideal constant gamma nozzle and what I'd like to to give you is some information about the the role of temperature change. In the second case, what the lower initial temperature will reach a chamber pressure of fifty point six six bar. So you see a difference of three bars due to the twenty degrees of temperature change as initial temperature. And you can also see that the corresponding thrust value will be 1.89 meganewton compared to two meganewtons that you have in this case. So the total impulse will be the same because we have the same C star, the same CF, the same specific impulse and uh, the same amount of propellant. The total impulse will be the same, but the thrust is less. That means the time is longer. So there will be a longer burning time because of the, the lower pressure, the lower burning rate, the lower thrust. So you will see that time will be that it, it was 120 seconds here. It was one of the other, right? <clears throat> it was among data, I think, or not? Uh, yeah. The, the, here we have uh, among data, we know that this is under 20 seconds, and we can evaluate here under 26 seconds. So we have six seconds more of duration due to the that reduced trust, reduced performance given by the lower pressure. And that's all for today.